Father in heaven, we humbly come to you in prayer. We honor you and glorify you, O God. Forgive us our sin as we forgave those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil and cleanse us by the holy blood of our Lord 
Jesus, dear God, the world and our country is under pandemic due to the virus COVID-19. Many lives are affected. Plenty of people are in sickness. A lot of people died already. Numbers of jobless people is rising. Some are lacking of food. Dear God, you are a mighty God. And nothing is hidden from you. You know everything, even the numbers of our hair. You have given us instruction on what to do. In Second Chronicles 7.14, you said that if we, your people, will humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn away from our wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and will heal our land. Father God, please always guide our actions and decisions that we will follow your will in everything we do. Continue to give us strength and courage to resist the work of the enemy by your grace, love, and goodness. Hear our cry. Heal our land. Many are suffering right now. Bless us, our leaders of the land, our doctors, nurses, and all frontliners. Protect each and every one of us. Give us knowledge. Give us wisdom, O God. Give us understanding. And those who are struggling, help them, O God. Continue to bless our pastors, particularly Pastor Arnel Aristoteles, Pastor Benji Miranda, Pastor June Mayor, and each and every spiritual leaders. Guide them always and protect them and their family from harm. Continue to encourage your people to depend only to you, that we should not worry that you, O oh God, are in control, that we should be still, that we should wait for your action, not in our time, but in your time. Please comfort those who lost their loved ones. Bless our government leaders that they may have fear in you that whatever they do, it is according to your will, O God. Bless our source of food and protect our drinking water. Hear us, O God. Thank you for your goodness and love. Thank you for your action. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our scripture passage is found in Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and there all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. May the Lord bless the reading of His word. Good morning, GCF Montalban. How are you? I pray that you are continuing in the faith and are still rejoicing in the Lord despite our situation. Praise God that we are now in GCQ. But still, we need to be careful. For now, we can continue with our online services in the safety and comfort of our homes. Please join me in prayer. Father God, the Lord of the harvest, we come 
to your holy throne, we bow before you, our King, as we prepare ourselves to study your word. May your spirit move in a powerful way. Cause us to remember the things that are of utmost importance to you and to apply these in our lives. Thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I've entitled the message for today, Share the Gospel Boldly, based on Philippians 1 and verses 12 to 14. The COVID pandemic has really affected us in every way. Finances are down, whether in business or personal, many have been laid off. And 45% of adults, according to the government, are unemployed. Live worship services are suspended and only 10% can meet. Some, if not many, Bible studies have stopped meeting. And because believers are accustomed to going out and sharing the gospel, during the lockdown, many are not sharing the gospel. And so this message will encourage us not to stop sharing the gospel. Share it boldly. Philippians as a background, it was written by Paul when he was in prison in Rome in AD 60 to 62. He was arrested in Jerusalem in AD 58, and we'll take a look at the reasons uh, later on. Philippians was a thank you letter of the Apostle Paul to the saints in Philippi for the gifts that they sent to help Paul in his imprisonment. One of the purposes is to engage them, uh, to encourage them, to stand firm and rejoice regardless of their circumstances. And this includes sharing their faith boldly. Now, why should we share the gospel with boldness, no matter what the situation? More so during this lockdown. We shall see three reasons from the example of Paul. First, God wants us to know the gospel's unchanging purpose. And we see that in verse 12. God's gospel is based on his love and mercy. Paul was a recipient of these, even as he himself was undeserving because he persecuted the Christians. Let's take a look at verse 12, Philippians chapter 1. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Paul referred to the gospel. This is the gospel of salvation. Uh, that is the good news that Jesus preached. The same good news that his disciples preached. It was then the gospel that Paul began to preach shortly after his conversion to Christ. Paul knew God's purpose for the gospel is unchanging. And let us uh, see some verses and review the purpose of the gospel. We see in Matthew 28, and Romans 10, and uh, other verses. Let's take a look at these. Matthew 28, verse 19. When Jesus was here on earth, he gave the great commission to his disciples. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. God desires that every nation, every tongue, every tribe would get to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And that was what happened to Paul on the Damascus Road in Acts chapter 8. What he experienced, the salvation of God. He wanted the Israelites to know and experience too. That's why in Romans 10 verse 1, brothers and sisters, he said, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. This was the burden of Paul. The other disciples, the apostles of Caesar, they were also sharing the gospel to the Israelites. Who will go and share the gospel to the Gentiles? Now, for the Jews, the world was divided into the Jews, the people of God, and then the Gentiles, all the rest of the world. And we belong to that. So, who would share the gospel to the Gentiles? 
That's why in Romans 1, verse 5, the Lord called to be an apostle to the Gentiles, and his desire is for them to be saved. It is as intense as his desire for the Israelites to be saved. Romans 1, verse 5, through him we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. For his name's sake. See that? That's why it's so important for all men to be saved. This is God's desire. And Paul, his desire for that is intense. He also wrote in Romans 10, 13, 14. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In verse 14, how then can they call on one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? God desires that all men be saved. And Paul showed that for everyone, a person to be saved, he has to call on the Lord. But there is someone who should proclaim the gospel to him or to her. This is still true today. Do you have a family member, relative, a schoolmate or office mate who needs Christ? Like Paul, would you like that person to know Jesus as Savior? Now, Paul knew the unchanging purpose of the gospel, and that is the salvation of all men. He also saw God's unchanging purpose in uncertain situations. Take a look at verse 12 of Philippians chapter 1. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. With the purpose of the gospel in mind, and the purpose of proclaiming the gospel so that people will be saved, Paul acknowledged that his being in chains and imprisonment even served to advance the gospel. Let's look at what happened to Paul. In AD 58 in Jerusalem, he was arrested because he was being accused of advocating disobedience to the law of God. Uh, he did not break the law of God. Actually, the Judaizers were insisting that uh, converts, uh, Christian converts, should be circumcised. It's like faith and good works. But Paul rejected that. And he was being accused of bringing a Gentile into the temple of God. And that is not true as well. What really was happening is that because the Jews did not like the gospel being preached to the Gentiles, they concocted accusations against Paul to have him arrested. In Acts 21, verses 20, 21, when Paul returned to Jerusalem to speak to the brothers, he knew that when he went there, he will be killed. Look at uh, what the brothers reported to Paul. When they heard this, they said, praise God. Then they said to Paul, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. So, Acts 21 verse 28 continues, The Jews, knowing that Paul was there in Jerusalem, they began shouting, Fellow Israelites, help us! This is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and our law and this place. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. There's a temple inscription in the temple in Jerusalem warning Gentiles not to proceed beyond their Gentile court area. Huh? This is the inscription that still can be seen today. Foreigners must not enter inside the balustrade or into the forecourt 
around the sanctuary. Whoever is caught will have himself to blame for his ensuing death. It was this that the Jews were using versus Paul. That's why they had him arrested, hoping that the death penalty will be imposed upon Paul, and therefore uh, sharing the gospel would cease. Of course, Paul knew his rights. As a Roman citizen, Paul knew that he could not be executed, beaten, tortured, or put in prison without a public hearing. And because of this, he was able to share his testimony and the gospel before different audiences. As we look at uh, Paul's account in the book of Acts in chapter 21, 37 to 22 to 29, the Jews who accused him, huh? Paul was able to share his conversion testimony. And then because, uh, you know, they could not decide what to do with him, he was brought to the Sanhedrin, the 70 elders uh, composed of Pharisees and Sadducees. Paul spoke about the resurrection, and the discussion became so violent that the commander had to rescue Paul. Uh, these are religious people almost staring apart Paul, but uh, Paul was able uh, to speak about the resurrection. And so he was brought to Governor Felix. Paul shared his testimony and preached about the resurrection. You know, this Felix, Governor Felix, was so corrupt, he attempted to bribe Paul. That's why he asked Paul to uh, be with him uh, many times, huh? hoping that uh, Paul would bribe him. Now, after that, in uh, Acts 25, 1 to 12, uh, the successor of Felix, Governor Festus, Paul gave his defense and he appealed to be heard by Caesar. So look at uh, how God ordained the events in Paul's life. Finally, before going to Rome, in Acts 25, 23 to 26 to 32, uh, he faced King Agrippa, and Paul shared his testimony and the gospel. See that? So unforeseen opportunities during lockdown can happen to us. From the example of Paul, we see that there are opportunities that God gives us even during hard situations like this lockdown. We need to talk to perhaps barangay officials to get that quarantine pass, or to police officers, or perhaps in the stores where you need to go. How can we share the gospel boldly? Well, we can leave a gospel track uh, to those uh, people. During this lockdown, the greatest opportunity is the availability of social media for evangelism and discipleship. Why not use your Facebook or Instagram or Twitter to share your faith in Jesus and your testimony or perhaps post verses to point people to Jesus. Whatever the Lord impresses upon your heart, do it. Share the gospel boldly. The first reason why we should share the gospel boldly despite the situation is that God wants us to know the unchanging purpose of the gospel. Secondly, God provides us an audience for an engaging purpose. Huh? God always has a reason why you are where you are right now with the people with you. God wants us to engage them with the gospel. So what happened to Paul after his arrest? About two years later, Paul was finally brought to Rome to be tried before Caesar, a wicked and violent man. Paul did not know if he will come out of his imprisonment alive. It was a time of fear for Paul. But Paul did not stop sharing the gospel even during his imprisonment. He did not see that as a hindrance to sharing the gospel. Let's take a look at Philippians 1 in verse 13. Paul said, 
As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. The Jews had Paul arrested, put him in chains, and want him to be executed. They had their objective, but God had a higher purpose in all of these. Paul's chains served to prevent him from engaging more people with the gospel. The Jews wanted to restrain Paul, and ultimately, they want him executed. When a person is in chains, he is basically stripped of his freedom of movement, and usually when you are in prison in those days, you are awaiting your death. Paul knew this. Not one of us today may ever be placed in a similar situation as Paul's, waiting for his trial and the outcome of it. He was locked up in prison, but all of us can identify with him in this time of lockdown with freedom of movement curtailed. Paul, according to many commentators, was even chained to a Roman guard. This was the violation of human rights, as some people would say today. But Paul did not complain. He used this actually for the advancement of the gospel. The guard that we see here is part of the Praetorian Guard. The palace guard or Praetorian Guard, they were originally 10,000 of these hand-picked soldiers concentrated in Rome with barracks close to the emperor or Caesar's palace. They had double pay and special privileges and became so powerful that emperors had to court their favor. These Praetorian guards were like the equivalent of the presidential security guards of today or the Republican guards of Saddam Hussein. These palace or Praetorian guards protected the emperor or Caesar who lived in the palace. Hmm. Caesar's palace. The next time you hear of a boxing match to be held at Caesar's palace in the U.S., remember Paul who was near the Caesar's palace, wasted no time in sharing the gospel. Paul's chains actually provided him with a captive audience whom he engaged with the gospel. When we use the phrase captive audience, it means a person or people who are unable to leave a place and are thus forced to listen to what is being said. And that was what happened to the Praetorian guards who were chained to Paul. They had no choice but to listen to the gospel. Imagine if just 3,000 guards were guarding Paul. Uh, they would be chained to Paul in four-hour shifts, and that would be four guards per day. And that would be 1,460 guards that would have been chained to him in one year or 2,920 for two years, or let's just say 1,460 guards, and they have two shifts, perhaps, uh, a, a second tour of duty, so to say, they would have heard the gospel for the second time. And once the word goes out to the other men of the detachment, perhaps some of them would be unwilling. Pare, ikaw na lang muna, ayoko muna. The guards had no choice but to obey the orders to guard Paul. And so some of them, if not many, became Christians. This news spread, and that's why in Philippians 1, verse 13, Paul wrote, as a result, it has been clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else the time in chains for Christ. God's purpose prevailed. What man thought to be a suppression of bold evangelism of Paul actually became a wonderful opportunity to share the gospel at the very heart of the seat of power at that time. But only uh, for the Lord's glory. 
did Paul do this? And not only the palace guards came to know him, but even to everyone else. Of course, there were other people that Paul came in contact with, servants who brought him food or attended to his needs. Remember, Paul had his rights as a Roman citizen. Paul did not remain silent, but shared the gospel boldly. Paul might have been reminded by the Lord's instruction to him when he was in Corinth. In Acts 18, verse 9, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. The Lord reminded Paul to share the gospel and not be silent. He did not remain silent despite being in prison. How about us? Will we be stymied or forced to become silent by the circumstances we are in? Or remain silent because we are ashamed of being called Christ followers? Being silent has its consequences. I remember the time when I was in first year college in UP uh, because I uh, had to take uh, my math 14 for the second time. I had my classmate seated uh, beside me. And he was a UP Mountaineer uh, member, UP Mountaineers. And uh, every day we'll be in class together uh, in that math 14 class. I was already a Christian then, but I did not even share my testimony to my classmate. I did not even share the gospel to him. You know, one day, the class wondered why he did not attend class. And then for another day, he did not attend class. We learned that he drowned in a mountain climbing expedition. You know, that really struck me hard because I felt guilty for not sharing Jesus to that person. I became silent. And somehow, I felt the guilt of not being able to share Christ to that person. Let us not be silent, but like Paul, let us share the gospel boldly before it is too late. Paul was also motivated by love. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14, he said that Christ's love compels us. It is Christ's love that should compel us to share the gospel. If we love God, we will show His love by sharing the gospel to the lost. Because God loves the world and wants people to go to heaven and wants no one to perish. He wants the gospel to be proclaimed to all. In verse 20 of 2 Corinthians 5, Paul said that we are there for Christ. Ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Paul was an ambassador in chains and he spoke boldly for the Lord. But we can only speak of things that we have experienced. Have you experienced the love of God? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? If not, Please talk to a pastor or a Christian friend. Ask him to show you how you can receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Who is your captive audience during this lockdown? Maybe your family, your skeleton force, workmates, people that you are looking after at the hospital. Engage them with your testimony. Share the gospel boldly. Remember, we are ambassadors for Christ. An unperforming ambassador is often recalled by its country. If we are not bearing fruit for God, baka tawagin na tayo ni Lord. Wag muna. You and I still have a purpose while we are still alive. Share the gospel boldly.
We share the gospel boldly because first, God wants us to know the gospel's unchanging purpose. Second, God provides us an audience for an engaging purpose. And the third reason why we should boldly share the gospel is this. God shows us that sharing the gospel has an encouraging purpose. When Paul was arrested, he needed encouragement, and God provided this through the believers who sent him gifts. But he too became a source of encouragement and inspiration to the brethren. How? Well, Paul's example of sharing the gospel encouraged the believers to be confident themselves in evangelism. Imagine the believers during that time. They were fearing for their lives as well because their leader, Paul, was in chains and may be executed any time. But it did not take long before they learned that even under guard, even in his chains, Paul boldly proclaimed the gospel. Look at Philippians 1 in verse 14, the first part. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord. This really encouraged the believers not only in Rome but in Philippi. Most of the brothers and sisters in Rome have become confident of sharing the gospel of the Lord because of the example of Paul. Well done is better than well said, as some would say. Developing confidence in others because of our example has an impact in others. Author and educator Stephen Covey said, what you do has far greater impact than what you say. Do you have your Bible study members with you or your discipleship group? Are you modeling to them uh, what it, it is like to share the gospel online? Or why not start posting Bible verses and tag them and encourage them to do the same, thereby sharing the gospel of Christ? Now, not only did the believers become confident, they actually became bold. Paul's example encouraged them to be bold in sharing the gospel. And we see that in the second part of verse 14. They became confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. They actually went out and shared the gospel. The church in Rome was already one of the biggest congregations at the time of his imprisonment. But it was possible that they were discouraged by his imprisonment. But news of his evangelism, even under guard, reached them. And they were greatly encouraged. They began sharing the gospel without fear. And this is what, what Paul wrote and reported to the Philippians. They dared all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Someone said, may we as Christians be as bold in sharing our faith as we do our selfies. Today, are we afraid or ashamed to share our faith in Jesus? Remember, Christ endured the shame of the cross and willingly died for you and me to secure our salvation. The Bible says that whoever is ashamed of Christ, of him, Christ will be ashamed of when he comes again in glory. The early Christians had boldness in sharing Jesus. What's their secret? We see this in Acts chapter 4, verses 12 to 13. This was the time when Peter was proclaiming the gospel. Acts 4, 12 to 13, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. The more time you spend each day getting to know Jesus in the Word, the more you see what He did for you and me. The more we would want to do things that would please God as a thank you to him for saving us. 
How is your time with the Lord? Are you reading your Bible? Make that commitment today to get to know God more in His Word. And then pray for God to empower you and give you divine appointments. Pray for God to show you how to share the gospel and that there will be opportunities for you to share the gospel. And then go share the gospel boldly. Other believers are observing us during this lockdown. Shall we stop sharing the gospel because of the limitations of this pandemic? No. Encourage other believers by example to do the same. Share the gospel boldly. Now again, because of the dangers of COVID-19, these days we share gospel tracts or perhaps uh, share a gospel video online to your friends who are not yet believers in the Lord. Share the gospel boldly. And when you do, other Christians will be encouraged to do the same. Share the gospel boldly. As we do, it fulfills the gospel's unchanging purpose. As Christ's ambassadors, we have an engaging purpose as we do it. Our example has an encouraging purpose. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the example of Paul. We pray that we will be like him, proclaiming the word boldly, whatever the circumstance. As we are hindered by our present situation, may we see that there are still opportunities for us to share the gospel. We may be in different stages of community quarantine, lockdown and working from home or part of a skeleton crew at the office. Whatever the situation, if there is one who is not yet in Christ, who is with us, we pray that we will be able to share the gospel. Give us the confidence and boldness to share Christ. For those of us who can, we pray that we will use social media to share Christ. And may the hearers come to that saving knowledge of Him. We pray this for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters in Christ.